Okay. This is my first Z day and the last Z day, which is important. But uh, thank you for, for having me here. And uh, thank you for organizing everything. Okay, this is my talk. It's called How to Grow a Serious Society a Lifetime Adventure. You know, it's quite easy to get angry in today's world because we see inequality, we see you know, rich people and poor people, we see destruction of the environment and so forth. And even since like, when I was in high school, I was quite angry at this world, so I made a website where I will unleash my anger. Later on, I came across Jeff Fresco and the Venus Project, and they gave me a bit of hope. Not only that they talked about the same kind of things, but they kind of gave you some hope that we can change something about the society. Later on, I came across the Zeitgeist of Benedo, and Fresco was again kind of like the star of this documentary. And we'll talk even more about the structure of our society and maybe what we can do to change it. I got so inspired and so motivated that in 2011, I made a documentary, The Reality of Me, or Tron. It was 14 hours long, 37 parts. I worked one year on this documentary, and to my surprise, it became a bit viral on the internet. So much so that I managed to keep in contact with Jack Hespo and Rosanna Dos from The Venus Project, and eventually, I worked with them for several years. I was in charge of the Philippine magazine, their official magazine, for several years. I would write there, I would manage everything, I would submit articles to Fresco and Roxanne, so we will collaborate on these things. Now, those were very exciting times, okay? I remember the Occupy Wall Street movement. It was a movement against the system. It was not a movement against the political party, but the system itself that creates all of these problems. I remember Fresco and Roxanne, and overall the Zeitgeist Movement and the Venus Project, touring around the world, millions of people were aware of these ideas. And I was there with my documentary, you know, trying to reach more people from my bedrooms. <laughs> Unfortunately, nothing changed. TVP and TZM broke apart. I broke apart from the Venus Project. In both cases, it was not a very friendly breakup. But if the society didn't change, maybe we should change. From 2015 to present, the Trump documentary became the Trump Project. I wrote many books, over 30. I, I created many projects. And two months ago, I released a five hours documentary called A Message to the Aliens. I worked three years on this documentary. So in all this time, I learned, I think, quite a bit about, you know, many, how to, how to approach the problems of this world, what problems we have, but also about project management and how to keep your motivation alive. So this is what I have to say, okay? The world, it's a very complicated place. It looks chaotic. If you look at the natural world, it looks very crazy, like all of these creatures are actually real creatures. They are not photoshopped or anything like that. And for the past thousands of years, humans tried to understand the natural world, but they couldn't. They invented all kinds of gods, they invented all kinds of mystical creatures and stories. However, if you look closely at the world, you see patterns, you see faces in many creatures, you see eyes, you see noses, a horse has a face, a human has a face. That's quite interesting. Two eyes, you know, uh, a mouth, teeth, and so forth. For example, what is this? You may think that this is the arm of a human being. Five fingers, joints, all these uh, known bones. But in fact, this is part of this creature. What is this creature? This is alive today. This is a manatee. So the closer you look at the natural world and go skin deep, you realize that there are patterns. Even when it comes to bones, you will see it from a human to a cat, from a whale to a bat. You see the same kinds of bones, but put in different maybe ways and a bit, they look a bit different, but we see these same patterns. Now, over 200 years ago, this guy, and a bunch of others 
realize that all of these patterns are part of a process, an amazing process, the process of evolution. And today we know that we are part of the natural world. So now we know the manatee is related to the elephant, and the elephant used to look like this in the past, or like this, which is very weird. Even looking at this, this small creature, you know, if you look at it, you may think it's related to a rat. However, if you look skin deep again, not only the bones, but also at the genome, you realize that this little rat is related closely with the elephant and the manager, which is quite unbelievable. If you look at the lineage, this little creature has more in common with an elephant than it has with a rat. Bear with me. What I'm talking here is about a process, a simple process, that of a mutation that over time creates something very complex. A simple process creating something complex, from humans to octopuses and everything in between. Now we understand. When we look at these creatures, they are not weird anymore. We understand their colors, we understand even their behaviors, we understand the patterns. Therefore, the theory of evolution allows us to explain the past. Why big bones of animals that are extinct? Why shells on top of mountains? It allows us to understand the present, to understand that we are part of the natural world, and to predict the future, where it goes. The unnatural world, the world of humans. We have many things in our society. Bitcoin, billionaires, we have stupid movies, we have Facebook, climate change, waste, we have so many things. When you look at it, it looks like a complete and utter chaos. However, if you look closely, you will see patterns. Let's take two things that seem to be completely unrelated to each other. Movies and passports. If you look at movies for the past decades, you will see a pattern there. Most movies are either sequels, Iron Man 1, 2, 3, 4, or movies based upon popular stories or TV shows and so forth. It is not random. Of course, they want to make movies that have a fan base. Why? Because they want to sell more movies. We don't make movies in our society because we want to make something original or something uh, educational. We make them because we want to make a profit. It's the same with books, it's the same with, with everything in terms of media, probably. This is Sasha. She's about to hit me in the head with something, but don't be fooled, she really likes me. We have a really great life together. She takes me out of the computer world to see the natural world. Recently, I got my um, diving license so we can see the underwater world. You know, we care about each other and we are together. However, in this society, love is not enough. She is from the United States. I'm from the EU, Europe, European Union. I'm a resident in Spain, okay? For the past three years, and a mountain of documents and many lawyers, we were unable, unable to stay together and to be in the same country. Just because, well, I am poor. You see, we even had to get married and did all of the papers. Unfortunately, the lawyers told us that it doesn't matter if you love each other. It doesn't matter what documents you have. All it matters is how much money you have. In order for her to get a legal status in the EU, I need to either have tens of thousands of euros in my bank account or have a job, a long-term job. So the way that we treat people is not based upon how good you are, how intelligent you are. What you do as a human being is based upon how much money you make? You know, can you be part of our trade society? That's, that's what we do. So in both cases, we don't treat people or make media just because you know, we, want to, we want to make something more interesting and so forth. The way that we deal with these two situations is based upon profit. What is more profitable, even though they are so far apart from each other? Why more? Facebook and climate change. Facebook has a lot more in common with a mall than it has with the social network. What is the purpose of a mall?
for you to go there and trade your currency to get some products out. What's the purpose of Facebook? If you look skin deep, you realize that Facebook wants you to go there, watch the ads, so you trade your attention, trade your data, trade your currency. Just because a mall has some benches, some playgrounds for kids, and a few fake palm trees, it does not make it a social, uh, a social gathering event hall. In the same way, but just because Facebook has a messenger and it allows you to connect with your friends, it does not make it a social network. 97% of the profit that Facebook makes comes from ads. Attention trading. It's 80% for Google, 70% for Twitter. The rest of the trades are data trading. This is not a social network, and this is not a rap. How is Facebook connected to climate change? Facebook is a powerhouse when it comes to delivering ads. They have billions of dollars and billions of users. Of course, they will make millions of people buy unnecessary shit that they will throw away after a while because they will see the new ad for the new purse with the new iPhone. In this process, we have to create all of this stuff that is unnecessary. Distribution, production, storage of them. Of course, Facebook is a great incentivizer of consumerism. So don't be fooled by it. In general, the decisions that we take in our society are not arbitrary. It is the reason why we have a transport system that is based on cars, individual cars, instead of having a good public transport. Is because companies are incentivized to sell more and more cars. They lobby governments to make more roads, they cut down trees and make parking spaces. Of course, it's not like you don't know how to make a good transport system. We are not incentivized. Even the way that we design cities or towns, the city planning, is based upon the car model. And we make houses not to house people. We make houses to sell to people. In Europe, we have two to three times more empty homes than we have homeless people. So the way that we treat people is not arbitrary. It's based upon what you can trade in your society. If this human should trade for a house, this human will not be homeless. But that's all we care, not if this human is a good human being. What I talk about here, it's a force. It's a simple force, that of trade. I give you something only if you give me something back. And for thousands of years, this force mutated into something complex. Mutated into money, tokens, data trading, attention trading, social credits, and so forth. Please, 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 don't focus so much on money, because money is just one type of trade. In China, they have social credits. The government gives you some points. And based on your behavior, they will take the points away for it from you, or give you more points. With the points, you can go and access goods and services. It's all about that trade. The reason why billions of humans wake up in the morning is not because they want to see a beautiful sunrise. It's because they have to go to work, trade your, trade your energy, your skills, trade yourself into a job. Then you get some currency and you don't get access to what you need and you want. However, you also trade your attention and you trade your, your data to, to companies like Facebook, Google, and all of the other ones. It's all about that. We are milk, we are like a livestock society. The same way that we see those cows in the livestock farm, that's how we can see humans. So we understand that. All of these things are not random. They are connected with each other. The force of trade makes us create a lot of destruction from climate change to the promises that are stupid products to waste or billionaires. The theory of trade, if you will, allows us to explain the past, to explain why kings and kingdoms, to explain why slaves and slave owners. They allow us to understand the present. Now we understand. There are many types of trade. We understand Facebook is not free, Google is not free, many things are not free and it allows us to predict the future. We can predict that in the future, 
you'll probably trade your attention to get access to a self-driving car, for instance, to go somewhere. It's not about a currency, it's about trade itself. Both of these are created by simple forces that will in time will create something very complex. In both cases, it's all about the survival of the fittest. It's a reason why humans are dominating on this planet, because of our fingers, because of our brain, because the environment allowed for these characteristics to evolve. In the same way, it's a reason why someone like Elon Musk is on the top of the game because he knows how to do business, not because of any other reason. It's a reason why we don't see a good human being being on top of our game. If Jesus or Superman would exist in today's society, they would not be able to live because you cannot do good things and live in this society. They will have to become social media influencers, set their own shampoo line, advertise for companies, and this may look funny, but this fact alone, the fact that you cannot be a good human being in this society and survive, not try, survive, this fact alone should make us understand that this society has to go. This is not a society made for humans. This is the tree of trade, okay? And this is the origin of most problems. If we agree on that, if we agree that this force of trade pushes us into a destructive type of behavior, then that's it. You know, I don't want to have to tell you anything anymore. We will do something to fix it. But if this is the tree of trade, this is the entire forest. I do not think we can build, we can plant another tree. In another sense, I don't think we can create a different society, no parallel with this tree of trade. Because trade is infiltrated everywhere. Production of materials, extraction, um, and, and everything else, scientific development, and so forth. So my solution is, let's grow new branches on this tree. If trade is the origin of most problems, let's create trade-free goods and services. Trade free is the purest form of free. The ones who offer should not have to ask anything in return. And the ones who receive should not have to give anything in return. In other words, everything that we make for Tron, tens of books, hours of materials, lots of projects, everything is trade free, meaning we don't need anything from you, not your data, not your attention, not your currency. When we make a book, that's it. Job done. Take the book. Do whatever you want with the book. This is a true motivation. Imagine if I were to write the books because I want to buy a new laptop. That is an insane motivation. And unfortunately, in today's world, that's how it is. And we want to change that. We want to attack the world with solutions. In the name of trade, the entire planet was conquered. They conquered the sea, they conquered the, the mountains, they cut down the forests, they take the fish from the oceans, and every creature that's alive today has been impacted by this force of trade. In the same way, they are coming for your brain. They try to conquer your brain. Every piece of your attention is spreadable, and they really need that. There are so many companies who that's for, for whom you being asleep is a problem. You, you being asleep for them is not profitable. So our focus at home is mainly to, to focus on the brain and make sure that you are not, the human brain is not entirely conquered. Because, regardless of what to say here today, if we have a society of zombies, people who don't even pay attention to anything important, we can talk, 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 but nothing will happen ever. So we want for people to have, to have sane brains, scientific and relaxed, in order to understand what problems we have and what solutions we can implement. And here are some of the projects that we do. To access the internet, we need a device. Let's say a laptop or a computer. This is Tronjaro. Tronjaro is a Linux distribution. And we made this, of course, on top of other Linux distributions, because that's how it works in the open source world. And Tronjaro is easy to use. We have all kinds of tools to make it look like anything that you want. Some of the pictures I like. We have a hands and tracker blocker 
for the entire operating system. Which means whatever you access online, whatever apps you use, you will not see ads, you will not be tracked. So it will protect you from this, this companies. We have a trade-free VPN so you can access the websites that are blocked by your country. We have over 600 trade-free applications to replace all of that Adobe, Photoshop, whatever else you are trading for, you can find all of the alternatives as trade free. There are tens of thousands of pieces of software that are trade free and easily accessible. We have installed on Java on so many devices, all the devices, new devices, MacBooks, PCs, tablets, touch screens. It's so easy to use by my parents, is it? And they're not computer geniuses, they know that. And I test to enjoy with them actually to make sure that see it is well, foolproof or foolproof or I don't know. They know. Now, how about you use a proper social network? Firm Social is a social network that has no ads, no data collection, no crap. Everything you post there, you own basically. Let's talk a bit about that. We have all kinds of different themes works with mobile apps, connects with millions of people. You can follow websites directly. You can schedule books, create events. You know, you have complete control over the content. So it's a proper social network. Let's focus even more on it. Some social is in fact Friendlica. Friendlica is a piece of software. That's the social network. And because it is open source, we can take Friendlica and put on our server. That's how we create Tom social. The cool thing about it other people take it and install it on their own servers. What is amazing is that now we have created an entire social network made of multiple websites where they connect with each other. If you come on our social network, from social, you connect with everyone else and you don't even realize that. While Friendica is like a Facebook alternative, Mastodon is like Twitter in terms of how it looks. Pixelfed is like a clone of Instagram. YouTube is an alternative for YouTube. All of these people can take and install on their own servers. Think for a moment. Think about PeerTube. If I can host a few hundreds of videos, because it's quite expensive to host videos. I mean, this is not a big social, I'm sorry, video platform. But if thousands of people do the same thing, we create a giant video platform that could be bigger than YouTube and be decentralized. The cool part about all of this, everything now connects. Connects into a network called the Fediverse. This Fediverse is made out of millions and millions of people. And it's already you know, functional, it's working, we are using it every day. Here's how amazing it is. Aaron makes a post on his pixel thread, just like Instagram. I see his post in my own newsfeed on Friendica, so it's like seeing it on my Facebook, let's say. And then I leave a comment to Aaron, and Aaron gets the comment on his own pixel there. In other words, everything that connects in a seamless way. You don't have to do anything about it, everything works. It's almost like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter would connect with each other, and you can follow anyone from any of these platforms. It is amazing. We have Chrome videos, so it's a video platform. We have thousands of videos there. Anyone can use it to post the videos there instead of posting them on YouTube. We have Tom's files. It's a complete alternative to Google. Google Docs, Google Files, and everything else. Because it's even more powerful. You can collaborate on documents. You can, you can do anything that you do on Google Drive, basically. Or from chat, it is an alternative to Discord. It is a, it's the video calls, you can make different groups, you can, you can do anything that you want to do with the, with the chat based screen. And we have over 20 such services via Tron.tf. TF stands for trade free. Um, and, and this is just one of our projects, one of our baby projects. Now that your operating system is your friend, now that you use proper social networks, you use proper video platforms and so forth, we have two more websites, from news that curates news from all around the world, scientific news that is not clickbaity. 
and video it, a, a, a website full of documentaries and lectures, thousands of them decentralized. So you can keep your brain sane. We want to take the junk out of people's brains. And that's our focus. You know, we, we want to see some people who can understand these problems and react to them. And this approach is motivating. You know, it has a real impact. When I was on the Venus project, when I worked with them, and there are thousands of people interested in this project, most of them lose motivation because there is nothing for them to do. They can only translate some stuff and, and spread the word. But now, for example, on these platforms, we impact thousands of people that depend on these services. So it's so motivating to work on these things when you know that you are helping others. We are here somewhere. We create this kind of trade three branches on top of the trade trade three. And from afar, you won't even see us. It's quite invisible. But around the world, there are millions of people who create trade three goods and services, from food to accommodation and everything in between. We have a website called the Trade Free Directory, where we release hundreds, if not thousands, of such organizations that you can find from all around the world. Imagine this. Imagine this cycle, this positive loop. If you create trade free food, the people who take advantage of that can have more time to go and volunteer and create maybe trade free medical health for others. And the ones who get helped, they can create other trade free goods and services. In a sense, it's a positive feedback loop that can grow and grow. And we can think about you know, bigger systems. Think about a trade free transport system. When I came to Prague, one of the interesting things for me was the public transport system. It's quite well made, it seems to be quite efficient. But imagine if this could be trade free, meaning you don't have to give them anything, not a currency, not your data, and just use it. What would happen? You would kind of destroy the car centric model. Why would you pay for a car if you can travel for free with a public transport? And that, if you kill the, the car centric model, you will create more green spaces, you will pollute less, you will make the systems more efficient, more automated, you know, more self-sustainable, because you have no incentive to do otherwise. And if you think this is far-fetched, in Spain, where I live, they have something that is close to a trade-free healthcare system. Even if you're not from Spain, if you go to Spain, in 10-15 minutes, you can get a healthcare card that will provide you with every with the access that everyone has. You know, so you, you can go to the hospital and they will treat you like a human being. You know, it's completely free. I don't pay any taxes, I don't I'm not part of this of the system and I still get a trade free healthcare there in Spain. And Spain has one of the best healthcare systems in the world and the longest lifespan. So imagine if you can demand a trade free transport system here in Prague or in other parts of the world. However, we have to go forward with a megaphone and a compass. Just doing good things without talking about what's the problem and when we do these good things and where we are heading, I think it's not going to lead anywhere. To give you an example, when people search for Tunjaro on YouTube, and this, by the way, this is called FreeTube, it's a trade free interface for YouTube, no ads in abortion. So when you search for Tunjaro, you'll find many people who are reviewing, looking into Tronjaro, because they are interested in software. However, because we are very vocal about trade as the origin of most problems and doing trade things, some of these people, like the tens of thousands of views, get to talk about trade as the origin of most problems, get to talk about this trade-free approach. You see, it's like a vessel. Not only that we help people, but we spread a message. And you can do it. That's the cool thing about it. If you make trade free books, trade free music, trade free events, and you talk about it, you know, not only that you help people, but you also inform them about some important things. So I hope that in time we will grow newer and bigger branches that will eventually transform into this trade free tree. One force, a small one, that of Giving you something without asking anything in return over time can create something very complex. It can create a society 
of people who are sharing, of people who are more intelligent, who are more scientific, of new and better technologies, and, and a society in which you have time to care about the problems of the world, basically. Because I think that we cannot envision a future society. But I think that if we practice these sort of things, like creating trade goods and services, you would push humans towards a different kind of society that is a lot more positive than what we see today. I think this is, this is a realistic approach. Small steps, but it will take a long time. Same like with evolution, same like with this society that will begin. And I think that this is a true decentralized movement. No need for any organization. No need for anyone to tell you what to do. You can be part of it. I understand it can be frustrating if nothing changes, but that's how society works. It takes a long, long time. It's complicated. From India to the United States, from cultural events to all kinds of beliefs, people are complicated. But if we push them, you know, little by little, we create something different. If you look at the open source world, for example, when people create software, you will see better people there, people who help each other, and so forth. So I think that's what we can do. These are kids from all around the world, speaking about decentralization. Roma is from Russia, Aram is from Germany, Sasha from the United States, Alexei from Romania, we have Guy from France, Iman from Latvia, and these so beautiful people from Spain. What's cool about this is that these kids grew up in different environments around the world. But then they grew up and became my best friends. And today we work together to push these projects forward because I think we have to be realistic. This really is a lifetime adventure. These people translate things, these people help with software development, these people spread the word. They have a megaphone and they have a compass. And I think that is extremely important. Everything that I presented here today can be a lot, but this, everything is available on Trunkside.com. We've been doing these things for more than a decade now. And um, if I were to recommend one single thing, it would be the documentary that we just released, a message to the audience, which is, of course, trade free. It runs, runs for an our own uh, video platform, and uh, it's available for everyone. Translated in a few languages. Maybe some of you can help make some articles in Czech. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.